Welcome everybody to the 30th online cultural majlis. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be hosting our guest uh, tonight, who is joining us all the way from uh, Suleymaniyah in uh, Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, Dr. Osman Ahmed uh, is going to be introduced by a uh, friend of mine and uh, a, a colleague in collecting, I suppose, Shad Abdul Karim, uh, who is a graduate of Dubai, but he is the founder of Salam Art Museum in Suleymaniyah in Kurdistan. Uh, Shad, go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction, Sultan. And um, it's an honor to be introducing Dr. Osman, who um, I only not know as a collector. I have collected a work by him, but um, also as a friend. Uh, Dr. Osman has been very close uh, to me in the last few months, and uh, I really appreciate his friendship and his advice throughout these uh, last couple of months. Um, Dr. Osman was born in 1962 in the neighborhood of Trarbaq in Suleymaniyah. Um, he grew up in a very poor family, very you know, normal family from Suleymaniyah, um, who, um, you know, they didn't have much. And um, he, from a very early age, started to paint, started to draw. He wanted to paint uh, the city, the people, his family, um, and in very vivid and beautiful colors. Um, and actually, so then um, he grows up and he starts to paint in the 70s. He does works. He gets trained by some of the artists who are around the scene in Um And in 1980, he joins the Institute of Fine Arts in um, um He joins the Institute as one of the first that graduated in 1985. Um, and uh, sorry, my heart's racing up a little bit. I'm just a little bit excited. Sorry. Um, so yeah, um, Dr. Osman uh, then uh, graduates in 1985. He goes to Iran, um, but by force, he actually runs away um, in 1987, 88, um, after the aggression of the Iraqi state and the Iraqi army um, on the Kurds um, in Kurdistan. and. Um, he, uh, um, he, he runs away, he flees to Iran. Uh, over there, he stays in Sakha city. Um, he, he stays there, the Iranian uh, government welcomes him, the Ministry of Culture welcomes him. Um, he starts to teach at schools there. Um, he exhibits his art. Um, there's a couple of paintings, which are some of his best works, and we will be talking about them in this uh, presentation, including he made shortly after he fled from Suleymaniya, which is um, titled Halabja Chemical Bombing. So here's a postcard of the work, as you can see in the back here. Um, this, is, uh, this was a, uh, a postcard made for the commemoration of the Halabja uh, genocide, as it, as it is known uh, nowadays. Um, and um, and this, is, uh, this postcard was made to uh, reflect um, on the victims, and this work was, uh, was chosen to represent that. Um, later on, Dr. Asman uh, goes to Syria, where he stays for a few years under the patronage of uh, the former Iraqi president, uh, Jalal Talabani, um, who he stays there and he does a few exhibitions there. He does uh, one exhibition with the Kuwait, uh, Kuwait uh, Ministry of Culture. Um, and uh, then he decides uh, to go to the UK. And when he goes to the UK, uh, this is the early 2000s, um, he decides to stay there. He becomes a student once again. Uh, he does his uh, MA. He gets his PhD. Um, he has a lot of projects there, and he's done a lot of exhibitions, including at Kufa Gallery, uh, which was open until 2006 or seven, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Dr. Osman had a show there in 2003. Um, he had a monumental show at the Imperial War Museums in 2007. Um, and uh, moving on, I think when he moved back here, he also had had a lot of important projects here. He did monument to Halabja, um, a few of them actually, one, including one in Halabja and one. Yeah, um, so he's done. He's done so much, and um, this is him. And I don't know if I just am really good because I kind of just became really nervous out of nowhere. So I apologize. Uh, but anyway. uh, anyways, uh, thank you. Um, but as an anecdote, I would like to share the the first time that I met Dr. Asman. Um, I reached out to him uh, through Instagram, and um, uh, what was funny was 
we decided to meet at the Cardology Center where Dr. Osman has been the director since 2019. And, and uh, I remember when we, when we went, um, he showed us his studio. And he said, do you want to look at my studio? I was like, yeah, please show us your studio. We went and, and he, when, we, when we opened the door, it was just a really black room and it was all like debris and you know, it, like it was burnt. So apparently there was a fire in Dr. Asman's studio once um, at the Cardology Center and it burnt uh, a lot of his paintings away, sadly. Um, uh, and, and some of them, they were damaged, but you know, they could be uh, perhaps, um, uh, they, they could be like touched upon and made, made better. Uh, um, but uh, I remember I looked at him, I was like, he was like, you know what I've been through in my life? Like, you know, I've seen, I've seen, like, uh, I've witnessed multiple atrocities in my life. I've ran away. I became a refugee. And I was like, so th this fire is the least of your worries. He was like, yes, this is, this is nothing. Compared to what I've been through in my life, this is nothing. And that's why I like Dr. Asman because he's a character of perseverance. So anyways, thank you very much for allowing thank me to you. introduce him. Thank you very much, uh, Saad, for that lovely uh, personal uh, introduction. I will mute you now, uh, bring you back later, hopefully, in the talk. Dr. Osman, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. I just want to reiterate that you are joining us uh, from Kurdistan, and there could be some internet lag or uh, minor disconnection. So I apologize to everybody if that does happen. But allow me to share uh, my screen with you. Doctor, and we will uh, we will start uh, embarking on this uh, uh, journey uh, in your life through images. Uh, let me see where I am. Okay, there we go. Uh, doctor, can you see? Can everybody see my uh, my my slide? Here we go. Present. Okay. So, doctor, we're going to begin with this image. Um, first of all. Doctor, this, this is an image, I believe, of yourself and your parents. Can you tell us a bit of, about where this image was taken? I also want to know what your mother and father were doing. And I would then ask you about how life was like growing up in Iraqi uh, Kurdistan, in Suleymaniyya in the 1960s. Uh, first, I want to thank you for allowing me or get me on uh, your majlis and be very honored to be part of this project. And yeah, this, uh, this is my family photo, my mom, my dad, and my uh, civilians. My father has a, a tailoring background. As a family, we had artistic background and uh, interested to, for art. My dad was a writer, a writing and writing a poem and was very talented in tailoring. My sisters and brother were very good at uh, painting um, and drawing. Until now they do uh, time to time, but not as a profession. They were uh, wearing Kurdish costume. Uh, at the time, who was uh, mostly Sharwal uh, Marakhani, my father is uh, wearing it and myself. Uh, uh, as well, and uh, the women have the uh, traditional Kurdish women. Uh, myself is uh, this one. Uh, I have a long hair as well, which has been traditional at that time. People uh, normally, the boys, they have a long hair. That's lovely, Doctor. Can you tell us how was life like growing up in Suleimani and Kurdistan in the 60s and early 70s? Was it busy? Was it quiet? Were there many people? How, what do you recall? Uh, it was nice, it was uh, nice, but uh, we've been uh, t time to time always getting a bit uh, struggle with the uh, political movement. People were happy with what they have, but uh, we are always uh, facing the uh, runaway from the city because our fathers, our parents been involved with the uh, uh, fighting with the government was the challenging to get life better for freedom. They have always been part of that movement. So we've been, uh, uh, you know, victim of this kind of uh, being moving place to place. Uh, but yes, we we have a really happy life at the time. Doctor, uh, this is wonderful. I'm happy to hear. I also noticed from this image that. Your, sister, your hosting your sisters here 
in your uh, studio, does that mean that your sisters, that your family were supporting your career choice as an artist? Not quite, yes. I always uh, have my sketching book and uh, I always do the drawing and painting. Um, uh, and uh, the first things I try to uh, draw my civilians and my mom, uh, the, uh, my uh, families, where I can see, I can draw them. But especially when I stay at home, I always draw in my sisters and brothers. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, doctor, here and we are know, seeing... The, the, the colorful, the colorful. Sorry, go ahead, Doctor, yeah. go ahead. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the way the clothing, the costumes allow me to mix it with the European uh, styles and try to uh, play with the pastel, with the uh, full colors and, you know, the brightest of the nature of the landscape there uh, during summer, uh, during uh, uh, spring. It was so nice. That's right, Doctor. And we see some images of uh, the, the, the bright summer clothes that you talk about in a couple of slides. Doctor, here, these are your beginning years. 1976, you join uh, the, uh, the Fine Arts um, uh, Institute. Can you tell us about your decision to join the Fine Arts Institute and also, I am curious about this poster of Che Guevara. What is it doing uh -huh. in your studio? That's right. Actually, at that time, I was in the secondary school. I wasn't at the, we didn't join the Institute of Fine Art because we don't have any uh, Institute of Fine Art around the areas in Kurdistan. Uh, so uh, at that time, uh, I, I was under the uh, profession of, under the supervising Mom, uh, Mr. Kamil, uh, Mr. Kamil Ahmed, which is, uh, a very great artist. We uh, many many generations been uh, supervised under their uh, provision. So uh, at that time, I was going to that club, which is called Sirwan Club. So many other artists were there. I was learning from them. We changing the uh, books and ideas and informations. And uh, yes, we you know the during that time is. Uh, our uh, nation has been let down by the uh, hopeless and uh, struggle with the government. Uh, people are uh, been moving to get uh, start a, a movement to freedom again, uh, which they started from '76. And uh, uh, there are small groups in the beginning, but they get in growing and getting having uh, a lot of uh, activities, especially with the Komale Transderan, which is a uh, communist. Uh, and uh, these things, they allow us to think about the people similar to Jafara, to Mari, to uh, all of these uh, left uh, uh, ideas. Uh, and uh, I was all, uh, my things, I always try to follow the artistic line, actually. Uh, I was painting and drawing, and it's not me, it's a lot of movement from theater, from the musician, try to bring the people up, you know, being down after 75. So uh, the musician of Soleimani have a lot of great concert, which is to bring life to people and to keep it uh, theater uh, group of uh, theater in. Uh, they have a lot of uh, great movement with the uh, dramas and uh, things which is bring uh, life to people again. So you are you, moving with the uh, drawing and painting as well. Thank you, Doctor. So in the beginning, you joined sort of a private uh, studio before you went into the Institute of Fine Arts. And you're saying that uh, the, the Kurdish sort of experience with trying to gain more uh, political rights mirrored and was similar to other experiences. And that's why uh, individuals like Che Guevara were seen as idols to emulate, not only by uh, the, uh, the people in politics, but also in the arts community. So thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, we will not be stopping here uh, talking about this work, but I want to give people a chance to look at some yeah. of your early works from 1976. You start doing monotype drawings. You start doing some kind of works on paper. Uh, these, these are works that we will revisit uh, in a few slides. 
But here, doctor, is quite an interesting work. And this is what I want to ask you about. This is a work from 1977 that was an important moment in your life because this was the time that I believe there was some kind of uh, forced Arabization on the Kurdish community. And I believe this seems to be an image of an individual who is being arrested by Ba'athists. Is this correct, Doctor? Tell us the context of this work. That's right, yes. You know, as I told you, we've been studying uh, in the uh, Kurdish language until 1977. And suddenly government changed the uh, uh, law and the rule uh, from the Kurdish to Arabic. And we didn't want it, we didn't understand, uh, and they put me in one by force. So the people started to, uh, to uh, uprising and uh, going to the state and uh, being joined the partisans, all of those things. And day by day, government getting more struggle with the people and getting more harsh and uh, searching for people the house by house who has a link with the freedom fighters, who have the book about the uh, communists, or they have uh, ideas about the left, and no, you know, so many things. Uh, not allowed to have them if mm -hmm. they have they find a book ab about uh, anything against in the government or the fascists or any dictatorship or anything like that uh, they will they catch it up they put in a prison that's the kind of event i've been witness it and i've been leaving. thank thank you doctor so uh, you yes. were, I just want to reiterate to the audience that you were only uh, 16 or 17 years old when you painted this work. And so even early on in your career, it was quite politicized because of the events that you witnessed. Uh, we will not be stopping too much with this image. I will just allow people to see this was an exhibition uh, called Racism and Hunger Exhibition. If people want to ask later about the context of this show, uh, this is, again, you were only 17, 17 18 years old yes. when you exhibited in this show, which was organized by the government, but this That's is also right. at a time of sort of global South uh, solidarity, uh, but we can talk about it later. These are two... It's organized, but by the... Yes. Yes. Doctor, these are two portraits. Uh, the one on the right is a portrait that you drew of yourself, 1979. You were about 18 yes. years old here. But yes. the one I want to draw people's attention to is the one on the left. And it is by your teacher uh, and even a friend uh, who is Abdullah Rasul, one of the great Kurdish sort of teachers and instructors, uh, and, uh, uh, towering figures of art. And I believe, Doctor, that your friendship with this person, it goes even for many decades and for a long time. Is that correct? And we will see him come back in a, a few slides as well. That's right, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, Doctor. Uh, Doctor? Actually, it's, uh, um, uh, Abdullah Rasul, he's uh, one of the, that's right, uh, best uh, known uh, academic artist in, I can say, in Iraq. And he's so powerful and good. He, the style he uh, can supervise in a student is uh, so unique. Uh, I learned a lot from him and uh, Mr. Bakhtiar, Bakhtiar, Bakhtiar Qaban as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, Doctor, now we will move to a number of other slides. I just want to show people how fast your career yeah. was progressing. So here you are also just about 18, maybe 19 years old. Uh, this is an exhibition that you held uh, even, I think, in your second or third year uh, with the great artist Ismail Khayyat, who was exhibiting, uh, Doctor, he was exhibiting all over Iraq. Okay. 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 Do you want me to talk about the first slide is going fast? Uh, quickly, you talk about Ismail Khayyat, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, the, that uh, show, it was the Sandika, uh, uh, the Suleimani Sandika Art uh, Exhibition during 1979. That was my first involvement with the uh, growing up uh, artists, like uh, famous artists like Ismail Khayyat, Ali Jola, uh, Bakhtiar Mustafa Qaftan, so many, uh, Ali Latif, so many other artists, because I was the youngest one 
to join. That's two of my painting, actually. Uh, one of them is, uh, both of them is a landscape. I made it by uh, knife. Uh, it's oil and color all, uh, on the wood. Excellent. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Doctor, Thank you. I see here that you, yes, you did capture sort of some of the uh, trauma that you witnessed, but you also captured some of the beauty of Suleimania and Kurdistan. I just want to draw people's attention to, this is a black and white image on the left, but this is how beautiful and colorful the women's clothes were. So um, we, we don't have to talk about this too much, but I want to give people a chance just to look at these, uh, these beautiful uh, pictures. But, uh, and also, uh, Doctor, the one on the right is what I want to ask you about. Yeah. This is another image of Suleimani on the left, but Doctor, the one on the right, this, this actually has a sad story. These are a group of mu musicians. They're, uh, they're girls. They're very young. Tell us yeah. what happened here. Yes, that's a group of, a group of musicians. They are very young, very talented. They've been uh, uh, trained uh, by uh, Khalid Sarkar and uh, uh, Anwar Qaladakhi and other uh, musicians. They've been trained very well and they are very talented. They went to Baghdad. They went so many uh, uh, festivals around uh, Iraq. When they came back to Slavery, they, I think they, they want to do Erbil. When they came back, they had exit, and four or five of them have been uh, passed away, and it was a very uh, big damage for the, uh, the culture and the uh, people in Suleimani city, which will always be remember them because the, the others which is that survived, they are still very good musician. And the four of them, which is cars, what they call the team now, Shade Cars and team still available in Suleimani. They've been doing very well. Uh, that belongs to them. I made this work at that time just because they give me that pain. Thank you, Doctor, for honoring their memory with this painting. I will carry on now to the next painting. This is also quite an interesting work from 1982. Doctor, I see a group of people. It looks like there is either an arrest or a fight. Can you tell us what's going on with this painting? You know, during that time, as I say, I grew up in the, um, uh, the military and complex uh, time, and we always have a kind of uh, uh, struggle in the city on the roads. The government came in to catch uh, to uh, searching for people, taking me away, and uh, there was uh, uh, there was a rule coming up uh, in later seventies, which is Basi say in any way any Basi has been killed in any way, uh, any places they came they kill ten people, so he don't doesn't matter these people as belong to that uh, accident or any uh, thing happened over there. But sometimes it's a pregnant woman, it's a children, it's a man, it's an old man. So that's a kind of uh, uh, that's a kind of accident that happened near Cinema Dal Shad, which is one basis has been killed. The Iraqi port came around there. Nine people around that area and arresting many, many other pupils. People panicking and running away, which is the people uh, panic and go away to go. That's the hard again. Uh, thank you, Doctor. So, again, this just to reiterate if people didn't hear that uh, what there was a Baathist uh, sort of command that if anyone uh, from the Baathist uh, uh, political party was hurt or killed, then they would go after 10 civilians. So, yeah, this was one of these incidents. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Doctor, this 1980 was a, a, a quite a, um, a year in Iraq's history. The Iraq-Iran war started with a lot of civilians. You told me, Doctor, of a story that even though the war had not reached Kurdistan yet, the television was showing you images daily. Could you tell us about that story, Doctor? What was the Iraqi television showing you? Because we see here images of what seems to be dead people on the left. So what were you seeing, Doctor, on the TV? That's right. You know, the, the, it was just the beginning of the war. The, the, the beginning of 34 months of that war there in 1980. Uh, daily in the television, we have a swarm in Ma'araka which is the picture from the war. And uh, this is uh, influenced by the TV, actually. Uh, and uh, 
so many people getting trauma because day by day, every day, they show us how these people have been uh, to kill it, been at the peace, and uh, they've been born it and bombing it, hated by chemical. So they don't care. They show people, we've been uh, having a dinner, we're having a, a tea time, and always the TV showing these people, uh, our people. I remember all that time we passing it so hard. We couldn't even sometimes try to not watch TV, try to get away out of uh, watching the TV at all. Of course, and the, the Iraqi national television was the only channel available to everybody. And so it was a very important and powerful propaganda tool. And we see here on the image, uh, sort of a, a collection of corpses and these seem to be vultures circling around them. And uh, about a million young Iraqis and also Iranians died in that war, which was devastating. Uh, doctor, for everybody here. This is a letter in Arabic that I will quickly translate to you. And the letter here says, to the Iraq, to the uh, Fine Arts Academy in Baghdad, this is a letter endorsing the membership of the young student, uh, doctor, oh, sorry, he's not doctor, uh, Osman uh, Qadir. Uh, he is a talented young man, and we endorse him for membership of the Institute of Fine Arts in Baghdad. However, doctor, here, even though you have the end endorsement from uh, a part of the government here, from the person who's head of this government uh, initiative uh, that is supposed to give you the letter in Suleimania, you were never allowed to become a member of the, the Institute of Fine Arts for one reason, doctor. What was the reason that you were not allowed to become a member of the Institute of Fine Arts of Baghdad? Well, they asked me the uh, membership letter of the Basi Union in my city, which is, uh, I denied, and I, I didn't want to be part of that. Uh, so they told me, which is, I just saw some of the teachers over there say, oh, it's not under our hand. Uh, we really like it. I to give him some sketches and paintings, what I have done. They've been very happy to be part of them, but say, it's not under our hand. We are sorry. You have to... to tell the administration that what they ask you. They ask me for the paper for, from the Ba'ati uh, Health Union. Thank you, Doctor. So even though you had the endorsement from, uh, from, the, from the government uh, um, arm here that's supposed to give you the, the acceptance and the approval, because you did not carry the Ba'athist party membership card and you were not a member, then you could not be a member of the Fine yeah, Arts right. Institute. And this is something, Doctor, if I'm not mistaken, it's not just you, but it's anybody else, any other artist who doesn't yeah. have a membership could not become a member of the Fine Arts Institute. That's right. And we didn't have anywhere, to, uh, any other places. In, you have to say, I'm not okay. told even they don't allow me as well. Okay, Doctor, thank, thank you very much. Doctor, uh, we will not stop here uh, at this work. I just want to give people a chance to uh, see. Uh, doctor, I, I have a, an unusual uh, question, which we didn't train for in our interview, but you are always so nicely dressed in all your pictures. So, Doctor, who, who I mean, why are you all, you're always so nicely dressed? Is this the 80s, the 70s, the 80s? What is the reason? <laughs> Thank you. It's the way I am, actually. I, I used to, you know, at that time, uh, try to be clean and uh, be, you know, just uh, a bit smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doctor. This was not this was not trained for before, by the way. But as you see, doctor, and actually the Kurds are always so impeccably dressed, and people, I think, in the 70s and 80s are so impeccably dressed. But this was a major exhibition of yours, 1980. Your show at the Fine Arts Institute of Suleimania, which had just opened Doctor, if I'm not mistaken, but I want to go to the next slide, Doctor, and show this picture. Here you are with your mentor, your tutor, your teacher, your friend, Abdullah Rasul, and he's the person in, in blue jeans. And he is the person who drew you three years before, correct? That's, that's, uh, no, he drew me same time. The same he drew time. me during, the, during the, where I was a student. Before. I didn't know him before that. I know him. Uh, 1980, where he was became our teacher. Okay, very good. So there's a, there's a, a, a friendship and a relationship that develops again. I want to show you here some of the images of uh, Dr. Osman's early exhibition. This is perhaps, Doctor, this is the first exhibition at the Fine Arts Institute in Suleimania. Is this correct? 
that's why if it allow me to add that to the, the even the couple of pictures before the crowd student around me and my teachers um, uh, uh, Abdullah Mahin, Mamasa Kurdo, and Mamasa Abdullah, Mamasa Bakhtiar, and my fellow students around me. That was the first year of the Institute of Fine Art being opened. And because I had a, a bit uh, background of uh, experience of drawing and painting, and I, I had a lot of piece of work, they allowed me to show my work to the new students who came to see it, and they are very happy. And um, my teachers, Mamasa Bakhtiar, Mamasa Kurdo, They've been uh, very supportive and uh, try to be the uh, in the industry for some months. Yeah, Doctor, uh, I am not surprised that they chose your work because it's so beautiful. But I see also that they're all smiling and clapping and happy. So I would be the same if I was there in 1980. Doctor, I want to move now to these uh, works, especially the one on the right, two women from 1982. The colors are just so beautiful, Doctor. Tell us about this image, this green color. Why, why are you depicting these women in this green color? Is there a reason? Uh, well, as I told you, we've been, we daily have accident with the political, with the people catching up, with the something coming, being um, murdered and killed and all of that. But we are still practicing our life. We see a lot of beauty of color. My, the color is inside my life. My sister, that's my two of my sisters. They always uh, choose in nice color. We've seen it at home. So I was in challenge and, you know, learning about the color, about the expression, you know, impressionism, and the uh, other artists' work like Matisse, Degas, and all of those things, Renoir. So try to uh, train myself as well. I, I, I think I didn't done a lot. I, I'm doing it. Uh, I mean, I done many, but it didn't make me happy yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors and the things it make me happy try to through this bring the communicating people around each other loving baby fun life uh, you know just practicing uh, normal life which is our right been struggling to have them most for some time of course doctor doctor just briefly uh, your primary resource to see works by uh, uh, Gauguin or Monet or whoever artist that you were interested in seeing was books and a library. Was this library in the Institute of Fine Arts or where was it exactly? No, we don't have a lot. It was, we, we just, if you get one, we travel, we, we took it hand by hand to, to one we give it to us, to us which is Mamosta Bakhtia, Bakhtia Rasul and Abdullah Rasul have access with some uh, uh, academic uh, in Baghdad sometimes they bring books they give it to us and the university of Slemania, they have kind of books and uh, we sh we see through there there's okay. no internet no access we don't have a bookshop we don't have any source really but we just we have a few books we try and hand by hand give it to each other i remember 1977 first time i went to baghdad by myself with my father which is allowed me to go to the one of the shops uh, uh, in Shar uh, uh, Rashid, I found one book, Canalito. I still have them. I bought that book by Canalito. That would make me so happy. I still have them. That's amazing, Doctor. That was what a beautiful story, and also a reminder of how valuable books are, uh, even then and today. Uh, and how the story. I love the story of how uh, your teachers, Abdullah Rasul and uh, Bakhtiar and the others. Would, would give you books and then all the students would share them week by week amongst each other. Doctor, the previous image we talked that these were to your, your sisters, but these are also very personal images in, in your own household, in your home, you are showing a very intimate moment. Here your sister is looking after a child and also your mother is breastfeeding a child. It's very personal, intimate Im image, Doctor. I, um, if you like to say something, I just wanted to allow people to admire the beauty of these artworks and the intimacy that you are allowing people a window into your home. Thank you so much. I'm, uh, I'm so happy always to draw my uh, family, my friends, even my, my friend's sisters. They are, all they came in when they, I saw them, I draw them, I paint them. I love the, the way they close in, they were in a costume. 
especially my mom, I have a very close contact with them because as a young artist, I was always see the, you know, struggle with life, struggle with the growing children and try to be a part of the daily life of them. Yeah. As a, myself, I've been always supporting the women and their lives and try to bring the attention of the colors and the beauty and the care. Thank of you, Doctor. It's a very beautiful and colorful painting. I really uh, love this work so much. Uh, Doctor, uh, this is a work in the Salam Art Museum collection. Uh, it's in Kurdistan. Again, it's a, it's a very uh, a different kind of art. It shows you how your art uh, changes from, uh, you know, political to, uh, to the street, to, uh, to figurative. And here you're showing a nude image just for a few seconds for people to see it. Doctor, this is the work I wanted to stop at for a few seconds here. Again, I have not seen this before. I have not seen artists depicting their mother in such a difficult situation. It seems as though your mother here is receiving some kind of medical care. Uh, there also seems to be another lady on the floor with a child that I imagine that is your sister maybe who's trying to look after your mother. Is this correct? And doctor, how, how could you paint your mother in such a, a very, um, how do I say, vulnerable state? Well, as, as I say, I've been uh, living as a person with my family and uh, been sharing the, all difficulty we have. And uh, this is my mother, which is, uh, she's ill and uh, having difficult time. My sister's looking after my smallest brother, which is my mom getting ill after uh, my brother. It's, uh, uh, my brother now, he's 27 now, I think he's 27, yes. It's in London. That one is going under my sister. Is, she's married and she got three nice uh, uh, boy and girls. Uh, but how does, that's how uh, I was living. I, my sketchbook is full of the, the Daily, daily uh, life, uh, and that's only one of them. I, I've been drawn here uh, so many uh, times. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, now we are moving to uh, a very important trip in your life. This is your uh, your your first trip as uh, sort of an adult. Yes, you did go with your father in 1977 when you bought the Canaletto book, you said, but this is the first time you go as an adult, Doctor. You yeah. go with your colleagues at the Soleimania Fine Arts Institute, and you spend about four days or so, three or four days in Baghdad. You travel by bus. It's a very uh, joyful time. And then you visit the uh, Baghdad Museum of Modern Art, and you encounter for the first time masterpieces by Iraqi artists, including uh, Faiq Hassan, Muhammad Arif, Shakir Hassan Saeed, Jawad Salim, some of the greatest artists of Iraq. You see their work for the first time. Tell us, Doctor, how was that trip? Was it important? And how was it to see the works of Muhammad Arif, Faiq Hassan, and these artists for the first time in real life? Yeah. Well, uh... As our teachers, they, they understand, we should give, take us to somewhere to see the original works of the masterpieces of the Iraqi artists. Uh, we have to thank them to make this trip, to go to Baghdad. And uh, yes, with the SETA group as well, which is a big part of our institute, uh, we went to the uh, Modern Art Gallery in Baghdad. Uh, I saw the Faiq Hassan's original works and uh, Muhammad Arif and uh, of course uh, uh, Khaled Chadir and uh, uh, Nuri Rawi and other artists which you mentioned it too. Uh, so it was so great uh, pleasure for us to be around that kind of piece of work, especially this is the Baha'i al which is part of the great work of uh, Faiq Hassan's. Uh, I've been influenced by his work and his uh, characters, uh, ideas uh, of uh, uh, powerful uh, artists in uh, Iraq. Uh, it was a great pleasure. As you see the pictures, we've been all together. And sadly, those ones, which is you circle in the uh, Y circle in the, on uh, Hiwa, he passed away uh, where he was a soldier and uh, during his trip from 
from uh, Kirkuk to Slemani, they've been uh, been they've been killed. And other ones during the '91, the blue one, Aras, uh, uh, sadly he's uh, passed away in 1992 during the uh, struggle in Rawaka in Slemania, Kenya. Thank you, Doctor. I, I just the reason we circle these individuals here, Doctor uh, Osman is in the orange circle, but the reason we circle the others is just to show how artists in Kurdistan suffered greatly from all the uh, the political events, the wars. Many of them were not able to realize their full potential. Doctor, I will not stop uh, in the next two slides to speak. I will just give people a chance to see them because they're beautiful images. This is a trip Dr. Osman took just the following year with two of his friends, seeing again the Museum of Modern Art in Baghdad, a beautiful image. And of course, Dr. Osman impeccably dressed as usual, um, a beautiful photo. Once again, this is another poet uh, co and writer, Muhammad Osman, also from Kurdistan, from Suleimania, uh, visiting the exhibition of uh, Dr. Uh, Osman. Uh, we will not stop here. Again, another individual who sadly uh, passed away only a few months ago. I just thought we'd honor his memory by showing him here. But Doctor, I want to move on because there's so much to talk about. Um, here, you are, uh, you are depicting a village uprising. From what I understand, Doctor, and we don't want to spend too much time on it, but this work you were not able to exhibit publicly in 1985. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. Yeah. I, I they didn't allow me uh, actually. Uh, uh, this, this, they have a story. This during my, uh, my this is my masterpiece of Dirasta Hurra, which I done in uh, fourth year. Which I supposed to show it in the fifth year on the uh, carnival of the Institute of Fine Arts. And You're they graduating on, this work. Yeah. When they graduated, yeah, it was on a show. But always, uh, the security guard is of the uh, Maya of Suleimania and the uh, security of the Basis. Before they came to the show, they sent one to browse and search if there is anything uh, can be danger or problem to them to stop the, to showing it. Mm -hmm. So they catch up with these paintings. To they told us they told them that not be shown and they want to know who's drawing it, who painted it. They, they try to find me, which is Mamusta Abdullah, which he's supervised me with these works. He's taking it part of it. They told them that is no one done it. It's, this painting has been done during under my uh, direction and under my supervision. So anything is there is my responsibility and I don't want to, him to be part of it. So it's been kind of argument in the Institute of Fine Art. I think all the teachers know about that, even the students. So uh, they, they came to the end that uh, give him, take it away and don't mention the name of the student and get him close to stop it there. That is very uh, admirable of your teacher, doctor, who protected you and did not reveal your name. Uh, inspectors and told them that this is under my protection and did not reveal your name. So, uh, I mean, it really is very moving. Doctor, I will move uh, quickly through this image. This is uh, Dr. Uh, Osman here in the red uh, circle. He's being visited by Peshmerga who came to rest. He was telling us the story, uh, but they also returned one of his uh, nephews, I believe, or a family uh, uh, member who was trying to join the Peshmerga, the freedom fighters, uh, and they returned him, and then they arrested in Dr. Osman's family house in 1983, uh, and they gave them food, and, uh, and uh, in any case, it was just to show you the close relationship Dr. Osman had with all members of the community. I will move quickly, Doctor, because after that incident, around 1985, Doctor, you head to Iran. And of course, the political situation is becoming more and more difficult in Kurdistan uh, for the Kurds, but also in Iraq in general. Uh, can you tell us briefly about your trip to Iran? Why did you go to Iran, doctor? Okay. Okay, so I decided to go to the, uh, join the freedom fighters area, which is, it can be free. When I found it, it's not uh, the way I want. I want to learn about the uh, art. I want to learn about the people around me, the culture, and the, learn more about to, go, to see the art world. Try to go to Iran. Yes, I went to Iran. That's Tehran. 
uh, I had some money with me. Uh, people, with some of the, those my people has been in the camp, try to be through United Nations to get uh, uh, permission or uh, paper to go to Europe. But I tried to go by on my own money to go something is not illegal. And before that, I went to the, with these my friends, they are all close friends, we are, they are artists, they are very educated. We went to modern art, uh, contemporary modern art, Museum Arts in Tehran. We went to other places, we saw work uh, of uh, Chiaco Michio and uh, Modigliani and the uh, sculpture of uh, Henry Moore. Uh, so many other artists, which is, they allow me to go to the, even in archive, we saw a lot of uh, great uh, art there as well. Yes, and, but it, it, that didn't continue much. We get, I get struggle after that. I mean, they been catch me up, they put me in prison for, uh, some months and they are getting struggle with the uh, not having papers and with the Iranian uh, government. So here, doctor, they move you into a, a, a refugee camp. They call it a refugee camp, but really it's a giant detention center and you stay there for a period of time. Uh, you start here creating works. This is you in the refugee center in 1986. You're still able to create work, doctor. This is a one, a really incredible photo. Um, I just want to give people a chance to look at it, and then I will move to this painting, Doctor. I see the colors, especially if you contrast it, Doctor, with the works that you did with the beautiful colors of the women wearing the dresses, the red, the pink, the colors you did of your, your, your sisters, uh, the pastels. Um, here, Doctor, you're going into the dark colors, black, abstract. I almost see bars here, like a window. Is this correct, Doctor? Am I correct in, in saying that? That's right. You know, sometimes it's not your choice. You know, that the way they, you face in the environment and the way the reality came through you, and uh, we have to do, be part of that life and be, uh, draw them. And uh, I'm, I'm always documenting things, really. And when they cut me up on that prison, they put me over there. Uh, they kept all my papers, all my sketchbooks, everything. What I had is only uh, one small ink and uh, some black plastics. In the deal, we have, I have some small cartons on the, uh, I bought it from the Tehran of the exhibition of the children. And these newspapers is Al Alam, Jillat Al Alam. Uh, that's what they have. What I have done, I cover it with a pastel, then I scratch in it, I draw on it. Uh, that's what I have done over there. Okay, Doctor, uh, I will move on, but I just want to give people a chance to look at the right image, the untitled image on the right. On the right uh, sheet, uh, there is some kind of adult theme. I will not elaborate on the adult theme, but I will give you guys another three seconds to look at the works before I move on to the next slide. Um, moving on, Doctor, this was a very difficult time of your life. 1987, Saddam uh, uh, campaign. I, I want to say, uh, yes. I, I, I want to actually uh, add something. When I was in Tehran. Yes, doctor. Uh, I, just a small word about it. Uh, when in Tehran, I saw a lot of books, which is, we never, we just hear about the name of artists. We never saw the books. Uh. But in the library, they have a lot of plenty of of the books of the uh, French artists, uh, abstracts, some um, the, So I came kind of being influenced with that kind of work. So it's now there. Okay, so the, the images on the right are maybe influenced by some French people, French naughty paintings. Okay, moving on. Doctor, this was yes. a very difficult you time to talk anything? for you, but for the people of Kurdistan in general, the Iraqi government has escalated That's their me. campaign against the <laughs> Kurds. And here, Doctor, they start using chemical weapons. You have tried to make, <laughs> you have tried to make your way back to Iraq, but doctor, you become a victim of the chemical attack. Uh, not uh, not the Halabcha one, but another town that you were at, and you lost your eyesight for almost two months. Is that correct? That's right. Doctor, I have to ask you this question. You are an artist, a painter. How did it feel to lose your eyesight? It 
was so hard. It was the kind of trauma which I went through for months. Uh, when I came back from Kurdistan to, uh, to from Iran to Kurdistan, I went through very danger mountain. I passed it all of those things. But the first time in uh, Bergalu Sargalu, 1987, uh, which is a hunter came and dropped the chemical uh, bombardment over there. It wasn't, I wasn't very close to it, but uh, the sheep, sheep was being hurt and uh, I went to there to help and to get close with it, a friend of mine. We, he was passed away and he couldn't, we couldn't do much with it. So I, we left, we didn't stay that much. And I was lucky that chemical wasn't camp facing me. It's good. It was the weather was helpful, and it was uh, uh, spring that time. Uh, the raining coming always did help. Hmm. So uh, I found out later when they told me the, uh, the doctor came to see us because some other was very badly uh, damaged and burned. Uh, they came to that place, I was there with the doctor. The doctor came, they saw me, they told me, you have to be brave, that is not serious. It's only, it came to the, your skin and it will go in a few months time and your eyes getting better and better day by day. But for one month, I couldn't see it. And I always, I didn't know how I can believe him, but there was no chance uh, to believe it or not. That's how I uh, should live until I could declare day by day. Yeah. Then Doctor, I moved it to yeah. another part. Yeah, Doctor, in a way, you were very lucky. Of course, in a way, uh, I mean, you survived it. And the weather uh, elements, the spring, the rain, it is really uh, fortunate that you were able to regain your eyesight uh, as soon as you did. A lot of people uh, were not as lucky. Uh, Doctor, here we will go to a period where you went back uh, to Iran to the town of Sakez. This is a beautiful picture. I will let people look at the photo and admire some of the paintings. Doctor decided not to stay in Iraq after what happened and went back to Iran. This time, this is the second trip to Iran. Uh, this time he becomes a teacher in Sakez city, which is in the Iranian uh, side of Kurdistan. It is in uh, the Western part of Iran. And look at the paintings in the back. These are the artworks that Dr. Osman did while he was there. The one above him, we will talk about because it's one of his monumental, maybe one of his most important works. But I want to show people his students here. He had a lot of uh, uh, women students. It was 19, uh, late 1980s. There's a, uh, a lot of interest in painting. And Dr. Uh, Osman was doing what he loves to do, which is to paint and to teach people. So I'm only giving people a chance to look at the works, Doctor, because I want to move to this work. Doctor, this work is one of your mon monumental paintings. It is the depiction of the Halabcha chemical bombing in, nine, in the 1980s. Um, tell us about this work, Doctor. How did you hear about Halabja? Television, radio, newspapers, and what did you feel? Okay. At that time, I was in a Karadakh area when uh, uh, it's uh, and you don't know it's called Anfan, but in the day, uh, army is doing all his uh, tank and bone and uh, helicopters and Josh or corporators to uh, the freedom fighters area. Our area, there is no Pershmerk around there. They're all civilians. And the, I was some villages. I went to the near villages there near the city to meet with my family. For three weeks, I was waiting. No one came. I learned that uh, all the roads has been blocked. There is no way can contact with the city. Uh, therefore, I returned back to where I was in uh, my place in Piramak uh, in Kopi uh, Karadakh. The way I learned that. Halabcha has been bombarded by chemicals. We didn't know what was the damage until uh, a few days we learned that uh, uh, in day before Seu Senan was bombarded. They went to this Astel. Astel is village. It was close to Seu Senan. So in Seu Senan, 80 people has been killed by chemical. I saw many of them. That was attached me. 
but when I learned, I went uh, because uh, you know the uh, process, process or progressing of the uh, unfile is take so long. It's about six months, but that uh, period of time, it's three four weeks during Karadakh until I managed to escape city of Suleimania and went to Kandil. Then yeah. I learned about Halabja. What Doctor, happened? Doctor, how did you learn about Halabja? Was it television? Was it newspaper or radio? The first things I learned it by radio, by oh, our really? people. You got uh, BC, BC, by BCM because Iraqi government never talk about it. And yes. when Anfal happened, we I tried with some other people who are on Peshmerga, women in Arafij, listening to uh, FM, Radio Monte Carlo, London, yeah. uh, uh, Lebanon, to talk about this crime. It's people can stop it somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, uh, no, that no one's mentioned it. But when I came to the uh, Kandil and uh, I saw a lot of uh, Bernard people, I saw a lot of Alabjad people around there, and I'm mixing them, being mixed with them, and saw a lot of them in a the camp. Yes. So, so I went to, I was working with the PUK media. Santa, they sent me to uh, Andil and uh, Dola Koka. Then I went to, they moved to uh, Iran, Ustak city. From there, we work on the uh, propaganda of the media, and then we have a newspaper published over there. Then the authority of the uh, uh, culture and art, they asked me if I can teach the young children, uh, young uh, people in their uh, place, which is called Khani Farhank. Okay. Doctor, the short, I from there. Doctor, I just want to interrupt you here. I just want to read a couple of comments from the from the chat. First, there is uh, someone called KJ Saeed who says, Dr. Osman, we have been living in the same places, you and him, from 1987 onwards, both in uh, Sar Galo and Bar Galo and Saket. I was in the same attack as a child that was KJ Saeed, a person called Zainab Lami. Uh, she's saying, I first saw this painting when I was about eight years old, and it shattered my heart to pieces. The pain depicted in it still haunts me to this day. And then finally, another comment we have, someone who wrote Powerful, it resonates also today with the uh, 25th anniversary of uh, Srebrenica. So it's a very powerful work. Doctor, but I want to say one thing. We do not know where this work is. Is that correct? That's right. As, um, uh, I've been, uh, been an art teacher over there. They allow me to have an uh, identity, can go anywhere around uh, Iran, which is not normal for the Iraqi uh, refugee over there. So I have access to go to uh, contemporary art museum in Tehran. I went to the university. I meet people. I met, uh, I met a project for me, for my friends. We made a good exhibition in Khan Sura in Tehran and Maidani Azadi in the for children of Halabja, I made a good project for them. Then they yeah. allow me, they ask us, the Ministry of Culture and Art in Tehran, ask me to uh, bring them my friends painting and drawing to make a posters, to using them as a propaganda, which is because the West and the uh, other c countries, uh, Europe, they blame Iran for bombarding uh, Halabja. So they say, if you do this, we support in you. That's kind of witnessing from the real people that Iraqi has bombardment of the Halabja. Yes, yes. So, Doctor, but yeah. thank you so much, Doctor. I, I have to um, move on because we only have uh, two or three minutes left. So what okay. I will do is I will say, I will just reiterate, this is the postcard that Dr. Osman was talking about. I want to reiterate that the Anfal campaign is the name of the campaign of the Iraqi government against the Kurds and the town that he was in was a civilian only town. Dr. Osman made his way to Syria from uh, Iran where he stayed uh, a period of time between 1990 and 1991. He held an exhibition there. Uh, as you can see, uh, one of them is uh, La ilaha illallah, Saddam Adu Allah. In the bottom it says that. Uh, Saddam is the enemy of God. This is in Syria in 1990. Doctor, I will move on and say that by the 90s, you moved to London, where your career really took off. Uh, you've had a number of exhibitions uh, in Kufa Gallery, which is an Iraqi artist gallery, in Ealing Central Library. You've had a number of exhibitions throughout the 1990s. A very important exhibition you did was the Imperial War Museum. 2007 was a very important year for you because your work is featured 
as part of this important retrospective of war uh, and human experience and suffering, it is also the year congratulations in which you got your master's degree, but you didn't stop there. You continued working, Doctor. This is the catalog of the book from the Imperial War Museum, a beautiful catalog. It showcases one of your monumental paintings, which is now in the collection of the Imperial War Museum in London. Another example is this book by Sarah Bevan, who talks about contemporary art in conflict. Uh, and this is you giving a tour in the Istanbul Biennial in 2005. Uh, and of course, just before the corona, how lucky, we were able to see your work featured in The Economist magazine, another early work by, uh, by yourself, again, showcasing the families and the suffering, showing uh, and telling people to remember, remember the art of expression of the Kurdish people. I want to stop here, Doctor, and say that even, you know, from 77 until 2017, I can't do mathematics, but that must be 40, 50 years. Doctor, uh, you still are showcasing uh, the, the Kurdish experience. Tell us about this work. This is one of many works across Kurdistan. What is happening with this work, Doctor? This is a kind of a sketch at the beginning, I, because I'm always uh, through the work, which we didn't say much uh, about the memory of the people and myself and my friends. I always, as I told you, when I was in a mountain during Anfal, I promised myself if I stay alive, I will let people know what happened uh, uh, that, uh, in that uh, progressing uh, uh, killing people. Uh, 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 continuity for all the time, that time. Uh, that is one of the work coming through my sketches, uh, which is bringing people together, which they are not in the same family, but they are getting together they try to uh, go somewhere or going to south of Iraq or uh, desert, uh, try to remember those people from the youngest to oldest to uh, very young, even to the animals, which is most of the people, uh, they have the animals and the cow and the dogs and others, which is part of their daily life. But they took all those, those things away. This is a pain of the nation, really. Yeah. And that's monument. I make it in three places in Iran, which is Kakshat, mentioned Halabja, which is it's not in Halabja, three and in Sleimani. It, okay. This one is uh, 22 meters long, three meters high, and other ones is 26 meters long and uh, uh, five meters tall. It is six, six millim uh, thick and uh, it's iron. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, we will be ending with this slide. I just want to show people this beautiful painting from 1980 of Dr. Osman with his painting at the beginning of the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, I will be stopping the slides and doing a couple of things now. So even though the presentation is over, I will ask for two things. First of all, I will ask for uh, Dr. Osman just to tell us about this painting uh, on his shoulder. There is, Doctor, a painting I can see women standing next to each other. What is that work, doctor? That is a, a kind of the period, the time on uh, uh, Institute of Fine Art, which is my sister, some of my friends in the Institute of Fine Art. We went to the party in the Nodo time. They having a uh, good time with the nice costumes, clothes, Kurdish clothes. So I try to make a kind of uh, mixture and harmony and contrast with the color mixture together. And I have made some. Uh, uh, painting of this time as well. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And the other thing I will do is before I end, uh, Doctor, you depicted uh, Halabja, but I want uh, to show another work. I want to show people that your work was not in isolation. Other artists also depicted Halabja. We have a prime example with uh, our friend Shad. Uh, Shad, could you unmute yourself and just tell us briefly about this? masterpiece you have hanging behind you. Who is this artist? Uh, and tell us about this work, please. Yeah, so this artwork is titled Halabja. I'll just... Uh, we can see it, it, Sad. You're covering it. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get away. Okay. Can you see yeah. it now? Yeah, lift, right. it, lift the computer a tiny bit, please. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, Shad, go ahead. What is it about? All right. 
Um, the, the work is titled, uh, titled Halabja. It's by uh, an artist who's also from Trarbakh in Suleymaniya, Ali Latif. Um, and um, and and it's it, and, and it's uh, it was made in 1989, so it's directly one year after Halabja took place, and it's about the incident. Um, and, and this art is painted in this style. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. I just want to read a couple of comments before I end today. There is a comment by Avin Ahmed who says Doctor Osman's works is a real history book through art that depicts different occasions and events happened back then. Uh, the paintings are just lovely and they allow me to live the life I didn't live in Kurdistan. Zainab Lami says the paintings are reminding me of my early childhood in Iraq and the feelings of home, security, familiarity, and warmth. I just want to say thank you so much to Shahad Abdul Karim for helping me organize this talk. I want to say thank you for, to my colleague Noor Tanir who really did all the slides. Noor does everything. I just take all the credit. So thank you so much to Noor Tanir who did all the slides with me patiently, Shahad Abdul Karim, and above all, a huge thank you to Dr. Osman Ahmed, our dear guest from Kurdistan. Thank you, Doctor, for your patience, and thank you all for your patience throughout this past hour, even with a difficult internet connection, we were able to make it. So thank you all. Have a good night, wherever you are. God bless you, and good night. Uh, thank you so much for Noor, for you, for Chad, and for all our guests, and please stay with us for all that hours. I really appreciate it to be your guest, and thank you so much to being interested on in my art. Thank you, Doctor. Alf Shakar. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.